Hello everyone. Welcome to Reactive High Labs. Today we will talk about bloom filters. So what are bloom filters? Okay, here I am not going to tell you what problem it is going to solve beforehand um, because it's a part of how bloom filter works only then uh, we'll be able to understand it. But uh, if I have to tell it in a quick way, I would say, let's say if there is a number nine, okay, and we have a very big set of numbers, okay, let's say this has 1 million records. So if we have to check if this nine is present here or not, we have to go through all the 1 million records, right? And if I have to do it for, let's say 1 million elements, 1 million elements searching in 1 million records, it would be very costly. So what bloom filter does is it mm, makes us easy uh, to search for an element uh, quickly okay and uh, it has some drawbacks also but we'll see in detail everything let's start with the technical definition of bloom filter so bloom filter is a data structure it's a data structure designed to determine designed to determine whether a given element is a member of a set whether a given element is a member of a set okay but with controlled probability of false positives there are some false positives possible i'll explain how okay this is the definition it comprises of a it comprises a bit array and a set of hash functions and a set of hash functions so you know what hash functions do hash functions map elements to positions in the bit array and thus set corresponding bits i'll explain how okay so <clears throat> so uh, now let's talk about insertion insertion of elements in a bloom filter okay so when an element is added to the bloom filter this process involves multiple hash functions okay so when an element is added to the bloom filter The process involves multiple hash functions. The process involves multiple hash functions. These hash functions take the element as input and generate a set of indices or positions in the bit array. Okay. Next is query. Now we have to search for the element. So we will query. So when checking if an element is present in set or not, the same hash function applies. Okay. We will use the same hash functions. And what do they do? The bits at the computed positions are then checked. Check bits at computed positions. And how are these positions computed? Computed positions. These are computed using these hash, func hash functions. Okay and if all the corresponding bits are set then only it will be considered that the element is present in the set so for example let's say this is the bit array okay and let's say we have two hash functions so h1 and h2 and let's say we have a number called 9 we do hash function with 9 uh, sorry uh, we do h1 of 9 and h2 of 9 let's say h1 of 9 makes this one and h2 of 9 makes this one so when we have to check if 9 is present or not again we will do h1 and h2 
and we find this index let's say this index is so this one will give us 2 this one will give us 6 and we will check again if 2 and 6 are 1 both are 1 then we know that it is present okay so that's what we do i'll, I'll use an example later in detail so where it will be clear uh, right now let's focus on the theory if all the corresponding bits are set only then bloom filter indicates that the element is likely inside okay but there are possibilities of false positives so key characteristic of bloom filter is the potential of false positives because multiple elements may hash to same position right it is possible that hash of 9 is also uh, 2 and hash of 8 t1 is also 2 and hash of 163 is also 2 it is possible right so that's why false positives can occur how we will talk about it basically these are collisions okay great then let's see the visual representation of this uh, bloom filter okay okay now let's say we have this bit array we have this bit array let's put their indices okay it means we will do something modulo 10 because we have only um, the 0 to 9 elements 0 to 9 indices so let's say we have three hash functions h1 h2 and h3 okay so what we do is uh, <coughs> we will just for now let's let's suppose we have already inserted the elements 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 assume that we have inserted it okay i'll explain how we are searching and then you will understand so let's say we have to search a string known as system let's say there is a string called system we have to search for it what we do is we will first do the h1 hash of the system then we do h2 hash of the system then we do h3 hash of the system so h1 let's say we do hash h1 of system okay same for h3 and to make sure that it does not go out of bound we will do mod 10 okay and let's say this comes 1 this comes 9 this comes 6 okay so what we do here is hmm? Actually, what we do is we will check here if these are uh, this uh, set or not 1 9 and 6 if you see 1 is set 9 is also set 6 is also set it means the system is present okay great uh, I hope this is uh, clear now actually we can do one more thing we can start by just putting everything as 0 okay and let's say first we insert we insert system we insert system and which makes 1 6 and 9 as 1 we are not searching right now we are inserting okay mm, let's say we inserted some other word as well uh, let's say we inserted the word design okay then h1 of design h2 of design and h3 of design Again, we will do mod 10. Let's say uh, this comes as 2. This comes as um, 3. And this comes as mm, 6 is set. Okay, 7. Let's say 7. Then we have 2, 3 and 7. 2, 3 and 7. 2, 3 and 7. Okay. Now let's say we have to search for something. Let's search for HLD. 
okay or do one thing let's search for system when we search for system as i told you again searching will also do the same thing hashing of the system mod 10 1 9 and 6 it will see that 1 is set 9 is set and 6 is set we know that okay now system is present because it everything matched okay if we again go and search for design we will find it because we know we have added it let's search for something which we do not know if it is there or not now let's say the string that we are going to search for is let's say it's hld so again we will do h1 of hld h2 of hld and h3 of hld assume this mod 10 this mod 10 this mod 10 gives um 1 6 and 7 okay so we will see that 1 is present 6 is present 7 is present but as we see we have not inserted hld right we have only inserted system and design but still we can see that hld is present but we don't exactly know what we have inserted right so this is going to give us a false positive false positive is yes it says that the result is positive the result is present but we do not know yet we will trust the bloom filter that yes it is present okay and then it will basically mislead us we are trusting it it but it's giving us false positive okay but this is fine this is still bearable we know that yes it is not present but it's still saying it is present this case can happen but there will never be a, a case never be a case where something is present but bloom filter says not present why let's use another example mm, let's say we search for LLD okay LLD we search like h1 of LLD mod 10 h2 of LLD mod 10 and h3 of lld mod 10 these will become uh, let's say 2 3 and 4 2 3 and 4 so we will see that yes 2 is not here 2 is here 3 is here but 4 is not here if anything when we know that if any of these become 0 because we have to check for all the three indices and if any of these indices become 0 it means that it is not present it will always be not present if something is not present it will it, it is like let's say it's it's like true negative true negative can never occur true negatives can never occur why because any of these are zero it means it is not present and that is correct that is good with us we want that at least if the element is there we should know but if element is there it will never tell us that it is not there anyway the hash functions are going to match okay but there may be cases that something is uh, not present but still it will tell you that it is present okay i hope this clears uh, bloom filter this gives some idea about how bloom filters work what you need to do is initially while inserting in the this bit array you have to do the hashing of everything and then while searching again do the hashing and check the corresponding indices false positives can occur because the of the collisions during the hashing but false negatives uh, sorry true negatives cannot occur if it says if bloom filter says that something is not present it's definitely not present okay so just to write it down if bloom filter says something is present it may or may not be present but if bloom filter says something 
is not present it is definitely not present so there will never be a case when a bloom filter says something is not present but it is present in the array it will never be like that got it great so let's talk about some of the remaining things advantages what are the advantages of the bloom filter highly space efficient compared to other data structures they are highly space efficient we can check for the elements quickly so basically membership tests fast membership tests fast membership tests basically o1 because we are only going to check as many hash functions as we have and the index checking is basically o1 so if let's say we have five hash functions five times o1 which is also o1 right where are these hash functions uh, or sorry bloom filters used applications generally these are used in caching because caches are fast we need to quickly know if something is present or not so there it is used it's used in spell checking if the element is present in the dictionary uh, again do, using the string search we do it uh, we'll quickly check if it is if the word that we are writing is in the dictionary or not if not then it means it's a because it's not present so bloom filter will definitely tell you, tell you it's not present right so it means it's uh, helping there also next network routers okay so these are the places where bloom filter um, finds its application okay great now let's talk about some of the use cases and how bloom filters are used there so first one is web caching what is web caching in web caching bloom filters are employed to accelerate the process of determining if a requested web page is likely to be present in the cache or not so if you have a browser you open a page so the system first needs to check if it is present in the cache or not if it is present it will just display that web page to you if not then it will go and fetch from the web and how to check if it is present in the cache or not using bloom filter okay so that's where bloom filter is used um, again as i told you before caching so anywhere caching is used bloom filter can be used uh, be it web caching or your system caching or your local caching anywhere so bloom filters are employed to accelerate the process of determining if a requested web page is present or not when a user requests a web page a bloom filter can be quickly queried to check if the web page is possibly in the cache if the bloom filter suggests a positive result then only we will go and check in the cache so basically let's say this is the cache so when we have to search for something let's say there is a page we have to search so instead of directly going into the cache what we will do is we will first check in the bloom filter if bloom filter says that yes it's a positive means it's likely to be present in the cache then only it will go and search in the cache not this this then only this flow will go and search in the cache otherwise it will not go okay so what are the benefits benefits are reduced latency it significantly reduces latency in web applications by minimizing the need for resource intensive cache lookups for every request next is efficient resource usage efficient resource usage it optimizes resource usage by avoiding unnecessary cache queries for non existent web pages as i told you it will not even search for the web page it will not even check the cache if it is present or not if bloom filter says that it is not present because it can never give uh, such an indication that something is present when it's completely not present or sorry when it's completely not present but it's present okay um let's say a user requests a frequently accessed web page okay even if there is something which user uh, quickly uh, frequently request for example let's say we are constantly opening instagram or we are constantly opening facebook so bloom filter quickly signals the likely presence of the web page in the cache this enabling faster retrieval and response times okay now let's see how uh, spell checking employs bloom filter
spell checking so again bloom filter uh, finds applications in spell checkers to identify misspelled words the spell checker employs a bloom filter to check if a given word is likely to be in the dictionary if the bloom filter indicates a positive result further detailed and resource intensive checks can be performed again let's say you are uh, chatting with a friend on whatsapp chatting and you suggest uh, you write some word which is not in the dictionary let's say there is a word called develop okay with an a develop with an a it's not present right so what bloom filter will do is it will go and check if it is present or not then it is possible that it will tell it that yeah this word is not present and if it is not present it's not going to search for it it will just tell you that this is a misspelled word sometimes the hashing can be like similar for two words so even misspelled words can be said that okay they may be right but usually um, it tells you if um, spelling is wrong okay so how it helps here it helps in quick word validation quick word validation so basically it enables rapid validation of words against a dictionary thus improving the efficiency of spell checking operations and reduced computational load reduced computational load it saves computational resources by quickly eliminating words that are unlikely to be in the dictionary uh, yeah example scenario includes a user enters a word in a document bloom filter rapidly indicates whether the word is likely valid or requires more in depth spell checking great now let's talk about how network routers also use bloom filters so network routers bloom filters are utilized in routers for swift ip address lookups particularly in scenarios with large routing tables when a packet arrives at a router a bloom filter can be consulted to quickly check if the destination ip address is potentially in the routing table if the destination ip address is potentially in the routing table then router can proceed with necess necessary routing operations so basically let's say there is a packet which needs to hop okay it needs to hop multiple ip addresses and it has a destination let's say this destination ip address is not valid so bloom filter will quickly know that it's it may not be present then it will just tell you that it's not a valid ip address it's not a valid destination just check it without having to go through all the hopping and then finding out this is not present it will quickly use the bloom filter to tell you that it's not present okay so again what are the benefits of it reduced lookup time reduce lookup time scalability it's easy to scale now right because um useful in uh, routers dealing with large routing tables because we know we have millions and millions of uh, ip addresses so we need that uh, because traditional lookup methods will be very computationally expensive so our router receives a packet with destination ip address bloom filter rapidly suggests the presence of ip address in the routing table expediting the routing decision great now let's see some of the implementation considerations that we need to keep in mind if we are implementing our own bloom filter implementation considerations first thing we need to check consider is the hash function hash functions so the choice of hash functions significantly influences the performance and effectiveness of bloom filters when selecting hash functions it's crucial to prioritize those with good distribution properties to minimize collisions and reduce the likelihood of false positives for scenarios where security is a concern we should consider using a cryptographic hash function they provide an additional layer of protection against attacks by ensuring higher level of randomness so our hash function should be such that it distributes the number because if it's such that which like distributes the numbers let's say this is the distribution right this is a distribution table usually it's a normal distribution 
but if it's more distributed distribution it would be good because there will be less chances of collision it will be more collision here right in this area but if it's more distributed there will be less chances of collision so our hash function should be generated in such a way that or should be chosen in such a way that the, the chances of collisions are minimized next is bit array size the size of the bit array that we are going to use bit array size the size of the bit array directly impacts the accuracy of a bloom filter the more the size the lesser the chances of collision right and if the less collisions are there it means less chances of false positives right so the size of bit array directly impacts the accuracy of the bloom filter larger bit arrays require more memory obviously the greater the size of the array there will be more memory but they can reduce the chances of false positives so we have to strike a balance between memory usage and false positive rates because that is critical so obviously we can choose a very small bit array but there will be more false positives here right we can choose a very big like infinite size or billions and trillions of size of bit array but there will be very large amount of memory consumption so we need to balance these we need a balance between these two what's the right amount there should be a we should know depending on the kind of requirement that we have we know how much data we are going to store what uh, false positive rate is good for us or what is uh, what uh, percentage of false positives is bearable so for that we have to depending on the requirement of our use case we have to decide what should be the trade off between the memory usage and the uh, false positive and the bit array size basically okay. uh, one more thing which we should consider is dynamic resizing should our bit array do dynamic resizing dynamic resizing dynamic resizing strategies address the challenges of changes in the number of elements in the set over time so dynamic resizing ensures scalability without compromising false positive rates it allows bloom filter to adapt to varying workloads and dataset sizes so let's say currently we have hundreds of users hundreds of users then our bloom filter can be small or bit array size can be small but let's say tomorrow we grow to 1 million users or not directly 1 million users from 100 let's say we go to 1000 users so this bit array size should be dynamically adjusted so that we should not compromise on false positives because 1000 users will give more false positives here as compared to 100 users similarly when we jump to 100000 users then again this should dynamically increase more right because 10000 users will have probably every at every step there will be false positives right so we need to uh, take into consideration the dynamic resizing also of the bit array and also we have to uh, make sure to redistribute the existing elements in the array in the bit array in such a way that um, our false positives is minimized okay and the redistribution of the elements at particular indices is also minimized okay so common strategies include doubling or halving the bit array size based on predefined threshold or dynamically adjusting the number of hash functions the choice depends on specific application requirements um, we should consider the runtime impact of the dynamic resizing while dynamic resizing enhances adaptability it may introduce temporary performance overhead during resizing process why i am saying this because let's say currently we have this right and we are doing 100 users we are doing let's say mod 10 then something will come here 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 and here then tomorrow when we do <coughs> it's more tomorrow when we do for 1000 users let's say we decide to do mod 50 then mod 50 of this it is possible that it might come somewhere here right if mod 50 of this might come somewhere here so we need to adjust that we need to take care of that okay let's say tomorrow and some new elements also come let's say it comes here it comes here and tomorrow again we have our users get decreased from 1000 to 500 at that time we have to again resize it okay and we need to make sure that this element which is out of bound for this size array should be given a proper place in this array so doubling or halving of the array should be taken care of and we have to also take the take into consideration the runtime impact 
let's say our number of users keep changing and um, while the number of users are changing at that time our threshold is reached and we decide to switch from this size bloom filter bit array to this size then this is the runtime impact right and if we do it at that time we have to take into consideration what would be the impact if we resize the array now will it degrade the user experience will it cause any impact on the experience of the users so these are the different things hash functions bit array size and dynamic resizing which we need to consider while implementing our own bloom filter okay so i hope this gives you a good idea about uh, what bloom filter is how bloom filter works and where bloom filter uh, works in what way uh, also uh, this bloom filter is one of the easiest data structures which has a very vast use case so it's easy to learn so i would say learn it it will be very helpful in the interviews if you bring it up uh, that you know this okay not directly telling that i know this but yeah uh, if let's say you have a cache discussion and somebody asks you how do you know if this element is in cache or not how cache determines that then you can tell that yes it uses bloom filter to quickly identify the uh, presence of the element and then the cache goes and checks for it and if it is not present then uh, cache miss is not very computationally intensive uh, in if we use a bloom filter right so that's it thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe i will see you in the next one